Good morning. I just want to show you a quick thing. I, um, I've got a piece of baseboard here for a job. And uh, this was just some leftover cherry that I'm using. And I'm just turning it into paint grade because I never use cherry anymore. But uh, it's got a knot hole here. Uh, and in paint grade, well, it's got to be filled somehow. So you, what's the best version of trying to fix something like this? So here are the options that you have. You've got wood filler. And this is a, a brand new... Uh, container a timber mate and it's a, uh, a water-based wood filler uh, that's what I like to use uh, for any kind of wood related things like nail holes and that kind of stuff but what do you use for filling in big uh, big holes uh, you can use polyfill up this is like a spackling compound uh, but this is what I like to use right here and each one of these products have a different kind of use to it and I use them for that specific use. So for anything that's big, I would use something like this here, uh, which is a body filler. And I buy a premium type. Uh, the cost difference between this and the cheaper version, I think was like $6. So it's not worth it when you're talking about a, a quart or a liter size. But here's something that you might want to be interested in. Any of the people that do like those river tables and that kind of stuff is JB Weld because that really works well too to fill in larger holes and things and it'll give you a kind of a nice uh, black charcoal type of, uh, of finish. So this, this stuff dries nice and hard as well. And that being said is one of the reasons I like to use this here for wood because the consistency of it when it dries it goes hard and that's what I like because it gets almost to the same um, density or, or hardness as the wood because what you don't want is you don't want something that's soft like softer than uh, the material that you're you you have underneath like your wood because what it'll do is it'll leave a concave in it so that's why body filler is so much better for that kind of thing and i got to be honest with you you can actually stain this stuff after it's uh, been applied you'll notice that the thing's still there but it'll actually take a stain so I've got a small little knot that I got to fill in. So here's what I do. And I'm only going to mix what I need. I don't want to be wasting this stuff because I'm from a Dutch heritage and I don't waste anything. Anyways, I just try to want to mix up just enough for that hole that I have here. So what I do is what you want to do is mix up your hardener first, okay? So sometimes what happens is the stuff, uh, it's got a liquid inside there that needs to be kind of mixed in with it. And if you don't use it for a period of time, they do kind of separate. And it's real pain in the rear end. So for something like this, I'm going to be adding in about that much right there, which is very little. If you add a little bit more, it it's not that big of a deal, but what you don't want is you don't want to be under catalyzing it with the cream hardener. Okay, and you'll see it, the color will change, okay, because this is kind of this ugly mustardy kind of color, and it goes to this kind of, uh, kind of a pleasant retro green kind of thing. Okay, and I make sure it's good and mixed. So you can see on the back of my knife was a little bit of it as well, so mix that in with it. And once you mix it, like depending on the, the condition in your workshop, if your, if your shop is uh, heated and it's dry, like this will probably go off in about five to ten minutes. The more catalyst you add to it, the, the quicker it will go off. But now, right there, see it's got a nice consistency. There's no slump in it. And uh, so it's just a matter of pushing it in. And what I like to do is just stuff this in until it starts pushing its way out like that. Okay, and then I make sure that I got what I call a hump on top of it like this. There. And I always want it a bit higher than the surface. Like I can see here, I've got to go a little bit more right there because I can see it. It looks like it's, it's like a slight depression. There we are. So I want to be above the surface, definitely not below, because if it's below, 
Then you got to mix up and do the whole thing over again uh, by adding an extra coat, which isn't a big deal at the end of the day. But now, okay, so here, there we go. Right here, I've got these things called cat's paws. And uh, they're just tiny little pin knots. Well, you can, you can fill it with this if you've got leftover stuff. And in this case, yeah, I would fill that in with, uh, uh, with the Bondo if I had leftover material. But if I didn't have this mixed up, that's where I would go to the wood filler right here. And I like using this. This is actually just a small little pry bar. But because the consistency of this is, you know, a little bit stiff, I like it because I can push. I can push the putty into these, these little holes like this. And the same thing, when you push it in, you want the hydraulic pressure to push the putty back out. And it does the same thing when you're doing, uh, doing it with a Bondo as well. Like when you push it in, it wants to pull, push its way back out when it's still soft. Once it gets uh, a little bit stiffer, uh, you don't have that same option. But here, so I'm just going to go around and fill in all these holes. Now, short of not, if you don't have uh, wood filler like this, it's not the end of the day. This works well for small, tiny little pin holes. Uh, I would never use this for, um, like even, a, even an 18 gauge hole. Uh, let's say you're doing trim and things like that. This stuff tends to sink in. You can get it into the surface, but once you sand it, you get slight divots. So I don't like using this for uh, any kind of nail holes. I like using this for little cracks and any of these little cat paws and that kind of thing. And then you can see right there. Okay, you can just make out that it's going into those little holes and filling them in. And so, for things like that, I just use my finger. If I've got just a handful of them to do, just go over the surface. And that's pretty well it. Make sure I got it all. Check my top. Okay. So now that's prepped for sanding. Once that dries up, I can just, uh, I'll just hit it with my block plane to knock off the big hump here and then sand it. But that's basically it. And once this thing is sanded and prepped and you put a coat of paint on that, whether it be latex or um, in my case, I use a urethane that I spray on, um, you'll get a perfect finish and no one will ever know that it actually has a Bondo hole in it. So anyways, uh, I'll show you once I get this, once, once this dries and I can prep it, I'm going to show you what it looks like and hopefully this is something you can use in your shop. Alright, quick tip. Now that this is set up a bit, okay, it still feels kind of that, that sticky feeling. I just get my block plane. And just level it down to where that's almost flat right there and then it just makes it easier for me when uh, I have to sand it that I'm not sanding that whole hump off all I got to do is just quickly go over it like just like I'm doing the rest of the piece of the wood uh, at this point the shrink downs already happened and, and the, if you buy if you buy the premium stuff it shrinks less than the other one so it's a little bit better for that but it just works easy just with a sharp block plane and don't, the last, <laughs> the last pass, make sure you don't go carve into your wood because that is, is just no fun. Okay, so I got this uh, filled in. I'm just going to give this a, just a quick sand and I'm sanding it with 120 grit just because at 120 uh, it's the perfect grit for knocking down uh, anything like Bondo and any of the body fillers like that. So it's just a matter of a couple of passes. Okay. I already went over it once just to clean up most of it. But that's basically it. You don't want to go too far with it. Cut. 
if you look right there, okay, right over that, okay, that is nice and flat over the top. And if I feel it, right there, there's no, no divot. Okay, and then the other one where I used uh, the timber mate, the uh, water-based stuff, that's fine too, if I go over that. So basically in the shop, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this for big holes. Like anything that's big for paint, great. And like I said, you can stain it. Um, this has a blue, a blue hardener for it, and it comes out green, but you can also get uh, gray filler, and then you can get uh, a white activator or uh, a red activator. And I think there's even a yellow. There's some different colors. But let's say you were going to do a stain grade. You could actually um, tint it up with the different kinds of fillers, or sorry, the, the hardeners that you have for the colors that you want. So um, Timbermate, I would be using for definitely 16 gauge holes and 18 gauge nail holes would be this. I would probably lean more towards this for if it's a face shown nail that I have to go over, I'll, I'll definitely use that. Uh, but this is kind of the middle of the road. I will use it especially for if I'm using it for different types of uh, stain grade wood that I need to have a specific color. That's what it's going to be used for. This is really, it's predominantly for anything paint grade right here. It's just super for that. Uh, JB Weld, I use it occasionally, only if it's an exposed knot that I want to have a black color. So it hardly ever gets used. It's one of those things where I kind of went, oh, hey, that actually works really, really well. So use that. The last is uh, uh, basically lightweight spackling. And uh, I use that for any kind of cracks or if I have to bridge uh, where two pieces of wood are going to be kind of butted together and you need to have a line. I'll, I'll put that into it. But that, I use that just sparingly for that. So that's, that's basically it for the fillers that I use in the shop. That takes up about 99% of what I, what I use. And I've used it for years with really good success. And uh, yeah, hopefully that can help for you. Oh yeah, sorry, one last quick tip. You see Putty Knife here? Okay, it's now got uh, Bondo on it and it's hard and well, you can sand that off. One of the uh, one of our followers to the channel here, he said, he says the way he gets it off is he uses uh, a torch. So I went, okay, let me let me give that a shot. Well, watch this. Look at that! Isn't that a beautiful thing? It works on the backside. Don't scorch it because you'll bend your uh, your knife, but what a great way to get putty off your putty knife. And it works It works for all of it, spackling, uh, this as well. It just cooks it off, and you've got your putty knife back to normal. Anyways, use it. It works.